Good evening. The school board meeting of Tuesday, January 17th, 1995 is now called to order. Uh, the first item on the agenda is adjustments to the agenda. Are there any adjustments? Connie? I'd like to add an executive session to follow the regular session uh, for the purpose of discussing negotiations for the upcoming year with the Teachers Association. I should note that that does include um, all the units because the uh, Education Association represents all the units. Any other adjustments? Okay, moving on uh, to approval of the December 13th, 1994 school board minutes. Were there any corrections? Okay, seeing none, the minutes stand approved. Uh, the next item is comments by high school representatives. Step up to our welcome podium here. <laughs> um, if you walk through the halls tomorrow, you notice a lot of tension on the part of students. This is due in no small part to the fact that midterms start tomorrow. Of course, midterms are probably the only thing going on. In December, we held our first chorus and band concert with our new music teacher, Mr. Richardson. It went really well. The last weekend in January, about 10 of our vocal and instrumental students will be participating in the Southern Maine Music Festival. This is an annual event uh, which will take most of the weekend and culminate in the concert. In other performing arts news, <coughs> Two of our school's less visible teams, our speech and debate teams, are having very good seasons. The policy debate team, which is usually really small, has about 10 people, which doesn't sound like a lot for policy debate it is. Um, Lincoln debaters, Lincoln Douglas debaters are especially proud of their varsity team, which won all top five positions at their last meet. The speech team held the largest tournament ever to take place in Maine on December 10th, with well over 200 people. We met with tremendous success, particularly, particularly in the category of humorous interpretation, where again, Cape held all top five positions. We're now gearing up for the state tournaments held February 4th and March 11th for speech and debate, respectively. For other news, including some which is especially encouraging for seniors, I'll turn the floor over to Pat. I'm uh, Pat Cotter, I'm a senior at Cape High School. Uh, the seniors right now, or all the SAC seniors and the seniors in general, are working on an open campus proposal to be presented to the school board next month. Um, the senior lounge will be opened. It's right outside the library door uh, as soon as we can find the door. Um, in sports, uh, indoor track for the girls has been going very well. Um, they aren't last, which is encouraging for Cape Elizabeth. The boys aren't last either. They're ranked second to last. Um, I'm, on, I'm on it, but hey, we're trying. Um, swimming is doing uh, quite well this year. Um, some unexpected people have stepped forward and um, are making their marks. The girls are either ranked uh, third or fourth in the region, and the boys uh, aren't doing that well. <laughs> uh, we have a new exchange student that came to us about uh, two weeks ago. Her name, hopefully if I pronounce it right, is Sharon um, Grosher from Switzerland, and she's staying with Burns. And we get a new one next week, I believe. Any questions? Just a comment on the uh, the concert. It was probably one of the best attended uh, concerts I've ever I've been to in the last five years. Very impressed by um, the chorus also. Okay. I'd like to second that. That was a, an excellent concert and very enjoyable. Any questions? No. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now it's time for the middle school representatives. Do we have any tonight? I hope they're not at town hall. They were unable to make Okay. All right, moving on to communications. Are there any communications? Well, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the many, many people who were involved in responding to the tragic circumstances of last week, um, particularly uh, Rick DeFusco, Katie Lisa, the members of the high school staff. Um, I would also like to obviously offer our official condolences to the Stanfords. I think it's important also to thank Dr. Jeff Safer, who is our school physician, a physician that does not carry with it a day-to-day -day or even week-to-week -week, uh, responsibility, but when crises occur, um, he is free or available for, for me to call and seek advice. Uh, and uh, I want to thank our nurses who came forward. Um, certainly, 
the student body. Um, this has been a very difficult time, and, and in, as sometimes happens, I think most of the time happens, we find out what quality people we're working with, um, including the students, because I think they handle what must have been an exceedingly difficult situation very well. So our condolences to the family and our thanks to the community for coming forward. I should also thank uh, the state epidemiologist, uh, uh, Dr. Catherine Bensheimer, who came um, Saturday morning, spoke to parents. Um, we sometimes tend to think that the state bureaucracy doesn't know how to respond to us. Um, and I found that everybody I had to call was extremely helpful and um, helped us get through the tough times. Those are my communications. Anybody else? Okay, moving on to the superintendent's report. Okay, and we're going to start with um, some comments about the Senior Service Project from David Perry, who is here tonight. Also, Gail Schmader, who's been another, I don't know if she's going to speak to this or not, but she's here in support, I assume. Um, two people who have been working on this. This is the third year that we will have been engaged in a senior service project. The, the report in your packet, which I think is really a uh, very complete one, covering a lot of the aspects, uh, actually the report covering mostly the first year, but again, uh, much of the experience was similar to the second year, so we thought that would, for those of you particularly who are new on the board, give you a good handle on the kind of complexity that a project like this brings forward. So I'd like to ask David to, um, and whoever else is yes, part of you, just you, okay. Um, good evening, my name is David Perry. I'm, I'm a teacher at the high school. I became involved in this project in the fall of 92 because I am the uh, faculty advisor for the uh, Student Advisory Council, the Student Council, uh, a subcommittee of that group, wanted to explore the possibility of seniors doing some sort of uh, community service oriented work in the spring of their senior year. Um, uh, as that report may have detailed for you, last year's report, um, a core group com composed of Gail Schmader, Janet McLaughlin, um, Nancy Greenlaw, Sarah Safer, uh, Brian Jen um, got together and hammered out a proposal that went through various revisions, um, was brought to the administration, was brought to department heads, was brought before the faculty, and finally we uh, started our first pilot project in the spring of 93. We took a look at how that first project went and decided we needed to give it another shot um, last year, especially looking at certain areas uh, such as uh, the number of students we had at a particular site. In our first year, we had quite a few students who were involved in education, especially during Cape Elizabeth, and several times we had two students in one classroom. Um, we weren't sure that that was always beneficial, uh, beneficial experience for that, so we attempted to split the students up more. Um, we wanted to look at the quality of the final project that was produced. Uh, we weren't uniformly pleased with the quality of writing that we got in our in uh, the final paper that they turned in and we wanted to uh, increase our numbers we were pre prepared to accept 24 students that first year and by the time we started the project we were down to 15 or 16 so we we made some revisions and what we thought would um, get us working positively in those three areas and several others um, more minor that were detailed um, in that report for you. Um, as far as the final project was concerned, we came up with a far um, better quality in writing uh, last year. And I think that was mainly due to the support we got from the high school administration and that we, we implemented a no write, no march uh, policy. That is, if, you're, if your final paper did not meet the standards, you would not be allowed to march in graduation. Um, it caused much hand-wringing but all the papers were up to snuff, it worked. Um, and we, we had a, a revision policy set up where students could um, uh, read each other's papers and then submit it to a cooperating teacher who would read it over. And if the cooperating teacher found that it was not of high enough quality, it would turn it back to the participant who then had the weekend to get it um, up to snuff. And indeed, they all were in the, in the final publication. Um, one thing that did not happen was our, our numbers did not go up. We were ready to accommodate 30 students last year, and by the time the project started, we were down to 18. 
and it seemed as though, and for two years in a row, um, the, the major winnowing factor there was that um, for the two weeks that the students were out of class, they would have to make up all the work that they missed. And that, in the end, um, was a deciding factor for many people, and that they felt that coming back with a week basically left of school to try and make up two weeks worth of work and to take their final exams and to participate in graduation activities in their senior year, that was just too much for too many people. And um, many people, there was a lot of self-selecting going on there. Um, all those who applied uh, were accepted into the project, but many of them decided to drop out just because it seemed to be too much work to do. And experience showed us um, that it was a lot of work. Um, there was a lot of work to make up. Um, during the two weeks that the students were out, they were physically exhausted, as I'm sure you're aware. When you change routine, you start something new, um, it puts different dynamics on your whole energy. Um, and they came home just worn out with their classroom teaching or working at Preble Street Resource Center or Habitat for Humanity. They came home, they went to sleep, and they had really had no time to work on any day-to-day um, -day work or projects that were assigned for that time. So it all crashed down on them in, those last, in that last week of, that they were available for graduation. This year, again, with the support of the administration and the faculty, um, we are approaching that two-week period differently. That is, um, the nine days that they were absent from class, they will not be required to make up any work that is assigned during those nine days. That will be a work-free zone for them and they will not be responsible for that material on their final exams. And we greatly appreciate the support of the faculty because it does take a little bit of um, shuffling to make that work when you're making up a final exam for 25 or 40 students and some of them are not going to be answering certain questions and the factor that all in, um, we certainly appreciate their cooperation on that. What we suspect that that, they will be responsible, however, for any long range project. So, for example, something is assigned the 1st of May due June 1st, um, just as all their classmates, considering they have two weeks before they head out on the project, they will be responsible for that work. Um, what we expect that will do is um, up our numbers. We are, again, ready to accommodate up to 30 students, and we imagine that we will have. Um, a full boatload this year in our, in our project, which we're looking forward to. The first year we did the project, um, we had a group of very, very cooperative students. Um, not that last year's were not, uh, were not uncooperative, but they, we had a wider range and wider variety of <coughs> student, which showed us some different logistical problems that we weren't aware of in the first year. And again, we were trying to open this up a little bit more and make it more accessible to the um, senior class as a whole and not just the students who feel that they can miss two weeks of school and make up that work in five days um, to see how such a project takes place with a, a more general population. Um, other uh, changes that have made, been made this year is that um, we're working on refining our selection process a little bit. Um, we had a sign-up um, sheet last year in which students supposedly put their names against um, sites they were looking at participating in. And um, that did not work as well as we had hoped it would. We had students who sort of circumvented the, the whole procedure and didn't write their names down, went to the site and made a contact and established um, an internship. Um, while other people were, were waiting in the wings expecting to do that. So um, we're, we've refined that a little bit. Um, we are making, we have two sets of support people available for the students. Um, we have adult mentors, volunteers in the community. Um, Charlie, you helped us last year, and Carla helped us last year. And uh, you, you, were, you were helping us last year, too. Excuse me. <laughs> um, and these, these are people who um, give their time to, to go and visit the students at their sites and um, contact them uh, by phone each week to see how, how things are going. Um, generally, we didn't match those up 
until just before they were leaving for their sites. This year we're going to match them up much earlier so they can be part of the selection process. So if a student's having difficulty deciding what sort of project they might like to participate in or what would be appropriate for them, that they would have an adult to turn to to talk about this. Um, likewise, we are going to hook them up with cooperating teachers. These are the people who will handle the uh, day-to-day -day paperwork that's involved in such a project and who do the reading of the final paper. Um, hook them up with the students much earlier so that each student will have um, two adults to turn to, one in the community, one in the school, uh, to get more information from uh, with regarding finding an appropriate site. Um, and in general, we're starting our whole project off earlier. Uh, last year, we, we only started disseminating information to the students in, after the February break. Um, I believe it was in early March. Uh, this year, we're going to do that right after mid-years and uh, then have the, the whole process of students getting permission from their parents and then getting permission from their teachers, um, establishing a, a, a list of possible candidates and then finally using the lottery. We have a lottery in place to choose the, the number of candidates that we could, um, participants we could use in any one year, but we've never had to use it because we've never had a quota. Um, this year we expect we will have to use the lottery, and that is set for March 1st. Um, and which, and concurrently, we will, I think, you have a schedule, a timetable for this year, uh, providing training for adult mentors as to what exactly is expected of them and how they can best uh, work with their participant while they're at the site. Um, some other minor things we're trying to do. Uh, there are quite a few schools that are uh, doing uh, service projects in the area, and we find sometimes that we compete with them for the same site, uh, especially with Shepherd, since they're sending out their entire senior class um, for the entire month of May. So we're going to try and contact those schools and see if we cannot work collaboratively so we're not all rushing the same places. I know Maine Medical Center has been very um, cooperative and willing to take on our participants if they just have enough lead time to know um, what types of uh, experiences that would be appropriate for them. Uh, one problem that we have is since it's nine days, it's a very compact time, and some organizations just aren't prepared to take someone in, train them, and use them for only nine days, and have them walk out the door again. So there is a certain amount of, there it's limited the type of possibilities um, that are available for us because we're only working with, with a, such a finite uh, period of time. Um, we are also implementing in the first week of the volunteer experience an evening meeting that Thursday as a sort of a, a midway point debriefing for the participants just so they can get together all together and share their experiences and discuss together what's going on with them and what it's like to be off on such an, uh, an experience. What happens, this does not happen in the past, and generally when they all get together for finally briefing, they're just rambling, rambling as fast as they can all at the same time, talking about what's happened to them. And I think it would be useful for them to have an opportunity to talk to each other and share their experiences beforehand. It also might help us to um, avoid any difficulties that are starting to occur if someone is in a situation that is uh, inappropriate for them for one reason or another. Um, we have reduced, reduced the debriefing. In, the original first, in our first year, it was a two-day debriefing. Last year, it was a one-day debriefing. And this year, um, we are going to try and cut it down to about a three-hour uh, debriefing. We feel that would that will work if we split the groups up and work with smaller groups and have them share their experiences. Um, after about three hours of talking, people are, are pretty worn out. Um, it's, it's an amazing experience if you have an opportunity to come and see that as people share um, what their experiences are. It's, it's very moving, it's, it's, it's very touching to see what people have learned from this, which leads into my next point is that um, we think that there is more to this project than just giving something to the community. We think there's a lot to be learned from this uh, process of giving. Thus, we are focusing more this year on what is the participant learning about the nature of giving. What are they learning about themselves? What are their strengths? What are the weaknesses? What are the types of things they can do? What are the types of things they can't do? Um, learning to take initiative. So we've put the, the word learning, is now the Senior Service Learning Project, in the title. And we're going to focus this year on what have people gained uh, from this experience and, and to be cogniz cognizant of what is happening to them over these nine days. Um, 
Finally, I want to thank the uh, high school administration in that for the first time the, um, the chair of this committee, me, has, released some, has received some release time so I can work on this project. So um, I'm very appreciative to Rick and Randy who, who have supported me in that this year and have made some time available for me to be doing different things so I have some time to work on this project. Um, finally, and perhaps the reason for my coming here tonight, is that um, this is the third year we're doing this project, and this is the final year that this committee will be doing the project as it is, um, because what we need is some direction. We, we have expertise that we're more than willing to share with you, um, but we do not have the authority to say where this project should go. That really needs to be made by you before us, and we hope in conjunction with the community, with students, with faculty, with administration. That is, what is the role of a service project in at Cape Elizabeth High School? Is this something that should be mandatory? Should it be optional? Should it be for credit? Should it not be for credit? Should it be done during school time? Should there be release time for it? Should it be done on a uh, person's own time? There are many parameters to work with, and we are in touch with schools in the area that do it in that full gamut of um, options I've just described to you. But the question is, what do we want to do with it? Um, as I've said, we have expertise we'd love to share with you if you have questions tonight or at a community meeting or at a workshop meeting in the future. Um, we can present um, some of the different points of view that we have on the committee because I think we do have a diversity of opinions on this project and um, we can share with you uh, the different experiences the different schools are having with this so that in the end we can decide what do we want to do with this at the high school or is this something that we want to make a part of the, the K through 12 curriculum that gets worked on um, gradually uh, from the time that a student enters in kindergarten to some culminating activity by the time they graduate in their seniors. But we can't do that. We are just a small group here. Um, we are asking you, therefore, for some direction on this. Well, can I just say, I think, obviously, we're not going to be able to decide tonight yes. oh, yes. the whole and, direction. And, and, and it's a big, we, we it's a big question. That, yes. um, you know, I think, I think there's some really good things about this, but I think the questions you just raised are something that will take some time, and we need your expertise. We do need to some input about what other systems are doing, and I think we do need to look at it in a systemic way. You know, what is the purpose of doing this project, and it is, is it really something we should be thinking about in terms of kids from K to 12? Um, so I'm sure that people here have some specific questions about this year, but I, I would suggest that um, that I hate to say form another committee, but somehow have a, you know, have a workshop where we can just sit down and talk about the various goals and hammer out if there's some policy level things we need to decide, if there's some curricular pieces that need to be worked on. Um, you know, I think that that would be helpful. And we are fully aware so, of that. Yeah, My yeah, no, I know that. showed here tonight is just to say, <laughs> get on yeah, it, get on the deck, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's take this to the next step. Right, this is an introduction right. for you yeah. to give you a little bit of information on it, um, so that at the next meeting at some time, you'll have some background, and again, we can make another presentation at that time, or we can go to what we have and start discussing the issues. Okay. All right. Um, Carla? Yeah, your hand up first. Um, I just wanted to comment on, um, based on my mentoring experience last week, I wanted to make a comment about um, what you said about the work makeup requirements this year and I'm really glad that that is what was decided because the comments I got from the two students I represented were almost entirely focused on the work that they had to make up and I asked both of them after the experience would they do it again would they recommend to other students would they do it and one of them said yes she would recommend it because it was really worthwhile she had a great experience but she would tell them it was horrible from the work aspect and the other one said no she would tell any student that asked her absolutely don't do it and uh, she felt it was punitive she felt that the school was encouraging people to sign up for this program and then saying but you knew you had to do all this work you have to do it anyway and she felt almost like it was a punitive sort of a thing so I'm really happy that that got worked out for this year I did want to ask you would there be regular exams during that nine-day period, or is that at a time of year when there probably would not be exams? Um, there may be 
exams, regular tests taking place in the Would that classroom. be something but that they, they were, they're exempt from that? Exam okay. also, that they, wouldn't they, count. Yeah, my as understanding is that's a, a work free zone. Okay. Um, that once they're gone, they're gone. And whatever takes place during that time takes place. Um, different people have approached it in different ways. I know one English teacher who was seeing half her class leave did basically what she wanted to do with the whole class prior to the project and then did a mini project the nine days there out with the remaining people. And she said it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. She was having those students in class, but with the remaining nine students who were there, um, they studied one thing in particular, and she said it was just great. And so um, that's how she approached it. And, and different courses can, well, they need to find um, the mid grounds and how they would approach that. But for two years, we tried it with making up the work, and we saw what the results were. And we took that to the administration, and we took that to the faculty. And, and on both sides, they're extremely supportive of us. And the faculty support is 100%. And the administration, before I could even open my mouth, said, let me tell you how I feel. And um, so Rick was great on that. So do you say, um, do you have the final papers? Yes, and that's something I could have come to you, and, and I will get you that. Um, I would be really interested in the mail. I've got, the, I've got the, the book that we made of the final paper, um, last year's book that I can show you. And I could find copies of the first year's. Um, both are good in content. Um, last year's, I think, technically the writing is, is better. Charlie, you I was involved the first year and, you know, experienced a lot of enthusiasm, et cetera. Was there a display created last um, year? There was a fun display last year. That was very impressive. There was a lot of enthusiasm. Yeah, last year's was in the library here. Um, this year's we're going to put in the foyer as you come into the high school. Um, with us wrapping up a little bit earlier, and we hope to get it up, whatever that final debriefing day is, we hope to get it up shortly after that. So it will be here in the foyer for the last two weeks of school. As the seniors come in, they can see what the classmates were doing. They can show their classmates what they've done. Um, it will be there. And then we're going to try and find a spot, a visible spot in the community to display it. A couple of years ago, someone happened to have lent us some portable trellises, rose Ooh. trellises that could move around on, but they needed that for the garden last year. So um, <laughs> we didn't have that. So it was in the library here. But, but once final exams come, um, the building closes down and it's not so public anymore. So we would like to find some place that we could display that <clears throat> for a little while during, during the summer for, so people could see that. Is that yes, that, that, the pictorial display um, is quite interesting. <coughs> what comes from that? What, what this, what they put on there and what's given to them in those sites that shows up there, like letters from students or, or photographs they've taken two years ago. So there's a sledgehammer on brick in the habitat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The library might be willing to have it. Yeah, I, I, I need to talk with George. Space. So that, that would be great. Booked in there or not. Yeah. He does that way in advance. So I need right. to get hot in. I found that to be as impressive as, impressive as they were at the experience because it was very visual. And there was a lot of creativity. Are we asking yeah. questions? Yep. <laughs> Ask away. Um, if you are wavering the nine days of, of academic work, is that going to eliminate a number of students because of their um, previous academic work, whether they were up to a certain grade level? or? It may. It may. Um, teachers are given a veto mm -hmm. power on um, Which has never been process. used. Um, it was only used once in the first year. Someone, a teacher felt that a student just couldn't miss that time. Um, but it's, it's only been used once. Um, so so is may, that held then, or is that at the beginning and then? That's, no, that's in February. They'll know immediately before the lottery whether they are allowed to participate or, or not participate. We don't, and currently we do, once someone is selected, we do not have a process for someone to be pulled from the project because of poor academic performance. That does not currently exist. It's and something we never thought. How are the right. sites selected? Do the students find them or do you provide them? Or? We have in the past um, come up with a list of possible sites. Um, that students are, and we have decided 
this year to put it more into the participants' labs. They are free to go and contact. Some of these sites are more participant friendly than others. For example, the middle school and Pond Cove have in the past been very willing to receive students in their classrooms. And um, last year, King Middle was very willing to have people come over to South Portland, very willing to have people come over and um, participate in various classrooms, do different types of activities. Um, students have gone out and found their own sites too. Uh, Joanna Johnson was working with the Refugee Resettlement um, Center, and she worked that out two years ago. Um, Anne Erler went down to an ecology camp in Ocean Park last year that she found her own. Um, so people have been very resourceful in finding placements on their own. Others have relied on some ready-made placements that we have available, and there's a list of possibilities that they can look at. But in the end, that's part of the process. We're trying to get them to sort of take the bull by the horn and say, okay, I want to do this. I'm going to go out and find myself a site um, where I can work at it. And so we're trying to put that responsibility in the hands. So that there's a wide variety of uh, there as to whether they want something that's ready made for them or whether they really want to go out and, and snuff around the dirt and see what they can find. Mm -hmm. Can can you just reiterate um, what the purpose of this project was? I, I don't think it's in this report. Just what why this project came up to be to begin with, and just because we've got well, a lot of it's you know, it's an idea board that I've been floating around for at least as long as I've been here. Um, and I came here in '81. That people were talking about seniors doing something in the in the sometime in the month of May. Um, as an alternative to classes, getting out of the classroom, classroom and doing something, doing something different, um, doing some sort of volunteer work. Um, when we got into it, we didn't realize how wonderful it was. And uh, the first year, um, students were saying, this puts 12 years of education totally in perspective for me. All these things I learned in the classroom, I suddenly saw how to apply them in, in this experience. And it really became a, a culminating experience for them, that they could take the, the school learning they had acquired over their previous 13 years and start to apply it in a, a more real life situation. Um, what is our purpose? What is our goal in this project? I think to inculcate the sense of um, giving back to one's community, that there is something other than the self, and to encourage that through this project. And I think we're seeing, too, that in that, in giving, um, in getting outside of the classroom, and getting into um, the real world, is what can one learn from that? What does one learn about the nature of giving? Um, what does one learn about the nature of commitment? What does one learn about the, uh, working with other people, working with people of different age groups, different economic groups, um, different, um, say, authority groups? Um, what does one learn about one's strengths, strengths, one's weaknesses? What can one do, what one can't do? How does one say no? How does one extend? The, the ground is very fertile as to what can be gained from this. I don't, don't have a one word No, um, no, I wasn't answer looking yet, for a but, one word but, um, answer. And, and we haven't come up with a philosophy for this program yet because it's still in a pilot, and we're not sure what the philosophy is because, um, in a way, we're we're experimenting with something, but we're not sure what the efficient direction is. So before we put a philosophy on something, um, we we want to see what our direction is, and then we can say, okay, well, what can we do to give this direction? I would say we really need a meeting <laughs> where we can just, you know, kind of bat around the ideas because I would argue that based on what you said, it seems silly to wait till the end of senior year to give kids that opportunity. Um, you know, it's something that we probably want to nurture, you know, from day one in the system. There are probably a, a wide variety of ways of doing it, but I, I do think it should be a systemic, you know, a systemic approach to it. Um, like we're trying to do with everything else, with some kind of senior end piece that kind of you know brings brings that strand um, together there at the very end. But I don't have 
a very good idea on how to do that, and I think you need, you need kind of a working committee to. Unfortunately, it will probably take us several meetings to just yeah. debate this and yeah. what other no, communities true. are doing and perhaps get yeah. um, the coordinators from other communities to come in and yeah. speak to us about the pros and cons. Our program was was modeled on the Chevrolet program mm -hmm. very much. As Brian Jem had a brother who had just graduated from Chevrolet, and, and so that, as being one of the 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 movers and shakers of this idea <coughs> three years ago. Um, that's what our model was, our working model. Though we knew we couldn't release the entire single class. We knew we couldn't do it for the entire month of May, so we, we formed something that was more workable for our, mm -hmm. our situation, but there, there are lots of other models out there mm -hmm. that do not involve just a senior year. By the right. way, there are many other schools that are doing it over the sophomore through senior year. Right. Okay. I, I think in a very homogeneous culture and community, I think what it does is it, it exposes people or youth to the real world. And when they leave these doors, when they graduate, they go out into the real world. And I think a lot of their 12 years or 13 years is, is in a very cocooned, homogeneous community. And I don't think a lot of kids are exposed to, to the diversities that are out there. I get my first reaction uh, reading this was that the um, young people shouldn't serve in our own school system, that, that there should be a requirement that they go beyond our district. We have the big buddy system. There are other avenues and opportunities that they can have. Um, and the second reaction that I had reading this was that it's a shame that it can't be throughout the senior year, an afternoon or more consistent to show commitment. It's easy to make a nine-day commitment. It's hard to make a year-long commitment. Um, and that I'd like to explore that and to see if it would work, that, that that could be set up in some way. Indeed, there are pros and cons to mm, yeah. either a, a short, intensive <laughs> program or a, oh, a more sure, long-term. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Indeed, these are issues we really need to discuss and, and debate. And I just wanted to say I really did enjoy working on this last year, and it looks like your changes have been all great. And as we talk about it more, um, you know, for the whole uh, theory or, or mission of the senior service, it would be interesting, too, to teach kids um, as they go through the system all the different levels of, you, of where you can be a volunteer, um, from serving food in a food kitchen as the real manual labor to volunteers on a school board where you're doing real policy issues. And, I think in my own volunteering, I've realized all the different levels, and that all levels have a huge amount of satisfaction in them, and you almost need to do them all and keep going back to lots of them to, to really appreciate um, what you can do. So I'd love to explore bringing it through all the age levels. And actually, there is a lot of volunteering that goes on in the younger grades. It's just not really recognized as such. They're big buddies with different um, age groups, and they read with each other. You know, if we could put it all in a plan, mm -hmm. that makes sense. I, I one sixth grade class this year did a, a, a big sale. Yeah. And they sold yeah. goodies to other classes and then donated that to, I think, a, a new family or yeah. kitchen yeah. at Thanksgiving. So mm -hmm. and I know that Gail does a project in the, is it the spring where you hand out the lollipops. Yeah. And she, anyone who's done any sort of volunteering, and I'm not sure how you collect your names there. Do they it's sign up? Truly, they just sign a paper they, and tell where they volunteered. It's in the high school, and we just stand there and buy our wares and make it really just to raise awareness of volunteering. And some of them don't realize, oh, I was on the prom committee. Oh, you mean I volunteered? Yeah, so you get a pop. So it's just an awareness mm -hmm. thing. So yeah. going along with that, yeah. mm -hmm. being aware, you know, working on that awareness. For that matter, in the elementary school, I would love to see kids take some responsibility for keeping their rooms clean for maybe you know in the cafeteria all those kinds of things we used to do when we were kids you know showing a little responsibility for your space and um, I think there, there are a lot of ways you can you know evoke the spirit the spirit of this so it'll be good to work on it and um, I guess we're gonna have to find a time to do this among the budget well, Does the, the iceberg. Have the power so. to make a 24 hour day a 36 hour day? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that, that would be helpful. But I, I do think this is important that, um, that we work on it. So we'll, 
it would be good to get your your committee together <coughs> with some uh, with at least some members of the school board to hash through some of the just data um, things and uh, and go from there. So. The obvious policy issues here are uh, those that have to do with should this be mandatory for a right. high school diploma. I mean, that is a tack that some school systems, in fact, some states have taken. Uh, one of the issues with those broad-based kinds of uh, fairly you know, rigorous approaches to it is that you wind up with various court challenges. Right. And I, I haven't kept track of what's happened in Maryland where this was a state initiative. Uh, I know it was being challenged, and I imagine by now that challenge has wound its way through the courts, and at some point we'll have some kind of legal direction as to whether school districts are, in fact, able to make things mandatory. Um, so I think I would, uh, the tack I would take would be to encourage this conversation to be along the lines that people are talking about here, and then in fact the project is done, one where we find common sense connections and uh, avoid you know, forcing somebody into uh, a stance of service, but to make it um, obvious where our values are, our sense of, of what it means to be a citizen in a democracy, what it means to be uh, a good citizen in a school. Uh, we talk about behavior rules. We talk about, you know, Conco has worked for a couple years now on little expectations for behavior. Middle school certainly has its hand with this as a high school. Uh, we have natural helpers. We talk about drug and alcohol situation and so on and so forth. So um, I will be listening for ways to connect this in common sense ways. The issues that rub are the use of time. And if I have to do it, what's a credit or should it be a, a separate course where people can sign up and then it becomes, takes all that structure. Uh, we'll be trying to lay that out. And ultimately, it is this body that <laughs> is the body that's empowered to decide on a policy level what direction do you want. So, uh, David, if you would let me know when you're having a meeting, um, and uh, I know you've given us a timeline, and I, you and I can talk back and forth, and I will try to find the board members, myself included, and join the administration and see what we can do. I think um, I, if I can have flip to... that around, we have regular meetings that we're scheduling to make this year's project work. Probably what would be better for us would be for set you to meeting. find your time and set a meeting. And we have enough committee members that we can get some of us there um, to talk with you. That would probably okay. be better yes. rather than for right. you to okay. come in our regular business meetings, which may not be as okay. enlightening to you. To if we want to really get down to nuts and bolts of this, okay, I'll um, get back to, to set yeah. set a, a workshop or however you wish to do it with whomever participating. Um, I, I think in terms of having a public workshop, it would be best to have some kind of idea of what we wanted people to react to. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would think we would need at least a couple working meetings um, and probably actually before February vacation if we can do it because after that we're going to be pretty tied up with the budget for a month and if we wait till after that it will for the school, for something to be in place next year, the school would probably need a direction by me yeah. if we wish to see whatever we're going to do happen next year. Because after May, um, it's hard in the summer to come up with a program right. and get it ready so it's really going to be um, a solid and uh, a valid and viable program right. to put it together during the summer. We really need to be thinking about it in May and, and have a direction at that point if we want to implement it. Right, we may have to move in incremental steps yeah. so, again, like yeah. a five-year plan. Well, just, yeah, just so, <laughs> so everyone has an idea of what yeah. a timeline right. looks like as to mm -hmm. what, where a policy decision is made and how that gets played out mm -hmm. in the system. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, David. Um, transition move. Uh, we have a letter here from. It's a weather is drafted this morning at the parents, and I hope Sue is here. Uh, just, I'd like to introduce uh, this topic by saying that uh, we have meetings with some of the staff today. Uh, if you're familiar with what's going on at Pond Cove, um, the, what was formerly the Lunt building and what used to be the media center um, has become Building C. I mean, we're going to call it this Area C of Pond Cove for the time being. 
at any rate, at the end of the first grade wing, there have been a couple of metal doors which have been barred. They've had things in front of it um, because the building has been built beyond and you had to keep it shut for construction purposes. And two or three of the staff said to me today as we opened it up and got their little tour of the building, it was like Dorothy in Oz. When you, when you had the black and white TV, you opened the doors where she actually steps out of the, of the little house and there it is in Technicolor. And uh, frankly, walking in, in there with him, it was, that was a very good comparison. So let's talk about how we're going to move in all the way. <laughs> We did the, the final punch list this morning. Um, we met with the faculty and staff and um, took them on a tour, as Connie said, this afternoon. Um, tomorrow morning, we anticipate getting all final clearances so that we can actually have official occupancy um, probably by noon time tomorrow. However, um, informally, the meeting began this afternoon. Um, beginning at 4 o'clock, our, our staff started moving in things that will be going in storage closets and things that will be going on shelves in the classroom. Um, this evening we had our custodial staff and bus drivers up uh, burnishing floors in the classrooms and um, I think by 8 o'clock tonight all of the regular classrooms are, are really ready to have things moved in. Um, tomorrow the volunteers will be coming in and working with teachers in their classrooms and actually <coughs> relocating small items into the classroom. So rather than have this move occur in a 24 or 48 hour period, as we were going to do over Christmas break, it actually is going to occur this entire week with everything um, finishing up on Friday night or Saturday. Um, to allow teachers an opportunity if they want to come in Friday, uh, Sunday and do some final uh, preparations uh, for their room, um, they can do that. And uh, as of next Monday, the students will come to school and actually be in um, Area C, which Connie said is, is the former Lunt building and what was the, the media center. Um, I think the teachers were delighted um, with the building. They were very excited about walking around. Um, they applauded um, those of you who selected the colors. <laughs> oh, um, that's good to and hear. They really liked the color combination, <laughs> the, really the accent colors. Really and yeah. um, they seemed um, very optimistic about the move and um, felt that it could, uh, could occur fairly smoothly. Yeah. So what we'll be doing this week, just so that folks out there will know, they're, the students will become gradually oriented to the new space. They'll have an opportunity Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday to actually tour the new building. Um, they may even spend some time in their new classroom. And uh, we will review with them how they will access the building from the outside, where the parent drop-off points will be, um, what the school lunch program will be as of Monday, and so forth. So when they arrive on Monday, um, they certainly should be well aware of what to expect and certainly know where to go. So, um, but the letter will be going out tomorrow to all families that are affected by the move. And um, the one thing that is in here, because the parent drop-off area is now the new access road around the back of the middle school, students will be dropped off by their parents and walk along the new walkway to the um, end of the Lunt building. So the main entrance to the, the Pond Cove School will be um, at the end of the Lunt building facing the high school. Okay, so that's where students will enter, that's where parents uh, will, visitors will enter um, by that means. There are also two other entrances on the playground side of the building that students will be using as they come in from recesses. Um, we also have offered the opportunity for students in both the, the Cape Elizabeth Park neighborhood and the Brentwood neighborhood to be bused if the parents wish to have their children bused until the rest of Pond Cove School opens uh, hopefully in April. But we do need those parents to call ahead and there is a number in the letter for them to call so that we can give them a schedule of when their child will be picked up. Certainly if parents want their children to continue to walk, they may do so and those living um, in the Farm Hill uh, Road neighborhood will walk along the sidewalk that goes along the new access road and come in that way. Those living in Brentwood will probably still enter the upper end of the playground by the Thomas Memorial Library. 
Okay, but there will no longer be a parent drop off on Scott Dyer Road. So that's um, pretty much it. I, we don't anticipate any, any problem with clearances yeah. tomorrow. Um, we'll be having um, the elevator checked out and um, fire code um, checked, and, uh, but we don't in anticipate any snags and we plan to move forward. My question, Sue, was it says um, all second grades and Mrs. Lewis will be housed on the second floor mm -hmm. of Blunt Building. So the second grades aren't going into their second grade classrooms. Um, that was an administrative change as of last Friday, and um, they, they made the decision to put the first graders on the first, on the first floor, floor, and um, the second graders, with the exception of Miss Lewis's classroom, on the second floor. And if um, Wayne or Nancy might want to speak to that, that was is an that administrative decision. Just temporary, or is it's the thought they're going to go back to where they used to be? Well, that whole piece hasn't been deliberated Design. upon with the teams yet so it's up in the air it's really hard to address that yeah, at this I was point. just curious if then we're going to move just so many people this summer is it is the thought hopefully not to move as many people well one might like to consider that fairly strongly okay thanks <laughs> <laughs> yes um, Two comments. So you already addressed one of my questions, which was, were they going to be acclimated ahead of time, kids, or were they going to be dropped off Monday morning and go? <laughs> and where do we go? So you answered that one. Um, the elevator. I'm also assuming that kids will be told that they're really not to use the elevator. I mean, I can just imagine these kids being really excited and punching the buttons. And it will be key operated. Okay, it's so, key operated um, elevator. Okay. Also, with the um, lunches in the classroom, has it been worked out exactly how the lunches are going to be brought? I'm envisioning like hospital carts, you know, yes. <laughs> going down the hall. Yeah, the details of that are pretty tight. Uh huh. They'll be delivered to the doors. So they have a count in each classroom of hot yes. lunches, and so that specific yeah, the count number system gets. system will remain. They'll pick that up in the morning. Uh, they'll and they'll go right door to door. And they'll be able to fit this it's all in the same lunch best. periods that exist. Pardon me. They'll same. be able to fit it in the same time oh, yeah. slots that exist. Yeah, the schedule hasn't changed. Okay. Only the site. Yeah. And room service. <laughs> this might be a good opportunity to institute some kind of policy of kids picking up their rooms because it's an ample opportunity <laughs> them eating lunch in those rooms. I just, I, I know that is a concern. I, I just want to note to you that I, I have uh, been to each classroom and talked about the whole domain of keeping our new building clean and responsibility for personal rooms, helping each other. I have to tell you one of the things that one of the, several of the kids have said to me in the last three weeks is, I'm wiping my feet, Mr. Doe, before I come in the building. <laughs> and so you've got this kind of thinking going Good. on. Sue's Good. arranging to have some runners into the entrance areas. Uh, I think the kids, and we'll reiterate this with them, the kids are beginning to get in tune with that. Um, they looked, a few of them looked in this morning when we swung the doors open. It was like this little horde of bees <laughs> charging forward to look in. And, and several of them noted how clean and, and uh, bright it was. And one of the kids said, and I hope we can keep it like this. Okay. There's a certain yeah. amount of thinking going on yeah. like that, and we'll, we'll um, address that again with them. I, I think they will be um, responsible for those kinds of behaviors. Good. And just one last thing. We will be having public visitations next Monday afternoon at um, 4, 4.30 and 5 o'clock. So the community at large um, is welcome to come and um, have a site walk of the new building at that time. But we ask that no one come before then. There's still um, a significant amount of work to be done um, the punch list is, is rather lengthy, but the items on it are, are minor. But it's touch up here and clean up here and um, so forth. And so there's still a lot of things to be done, and the fewer people going through the building at this point, the better. Um, we want to make sure that the children are oriented, um, but we want it to be sort of an organized orientation to the, to the building and not just having people walking through the building at will. Um, this will be a much pleasanter <laughs> tour than the one that Sue and I gave yeah. people last August <laughs> exactly. or September, yeah. whenever it was. Yeah. Uh,
but it does look nice and I think the community will be proud of it. Um, there are issues that we will be discussing as we go along. After all, uh, we didn't replace everything. It is a rehab and there are some things that, although they are absolutely in good shape, they, you know, it's obvious that it isn't a brand new piece. Um, but I think that the lift to the spirit of uh, the staff who will be moving in, and I hope that that is sort of a message that ripples out through everybody else. Um, there's just a, an inevitable, up, you know, like the kids and so on. We want to use this opportunity, I'm sure that the administration is also talking with, with our teaching staff. You may recall last year we worked out this uh, maintenance book we distributed. We talked about the property management model. Uh, our buildings have been so shabby that teachers have gotten used to pasting things on the walls and the windows and in a variety of ways tried to make them look better. Uh, so now we have to, the good news is it's nice, the bad news is you can't put everything up on the wall. Um, we are attempting to put up what they call tax strips. We will be able to put up quite a few of those and we are, are making a point that this is a building that belongs to the community and that we want to have staff feel very comfortable with making the room uh, attractive and reflect the children's work, but we also need to be conscious from the get-go that this building has a long life and we all have to work together on that. So just in case somebody asks you, we are talking about that and dealing with, uh, and staff I'm sure will be very cooperative about that. Any other questions? Thank you again for all your hard work. So. The public visitations, were you planning to post those somewhere publicly? Um, it, it was in the, um, the January 14th issue of the Cape Courier. Is that something that could go on public safety? Certainly. Yeah. I would like to get the public in there as yeah. soon as I could. Yeah. Is it something that could be in there? Thank you. Well, you could do a walk yeah. around. I mean, um, yeah, sure, we could certainly walk around. It would be nice to have you know, the administration got a couple of the kids, maybe. Um, but you see a little, they're kind of small to do that with. But, um, we'll think of something. Okay, great. If anyone does have any questions, I encourage them to call my office. I'd be happy to return their call. And um, if I don't know the answer, I certainly know where to find out for them. So please, if you have any concerns, just call the community services office. Thank you, Thank you so much. Um, we had an opportunity during our, uh, actually during our uh, finance subcommittee to discuss budget timeline, so I'm not sure we, we need to uh, do anything more but just to note for public comment that budget season is coming up. I distributed um, the uh, couple of meetings here. Some of those are from the town um, and some of them are for administrators but the ones that uh, particularly pertain to the school board. I think we I'm looking for my sheet. Do you want Oh, so thank you. I just realized that I do. Thank you. Um, we are going to begin our process on March 7th. Thank you. And this will be published. We always post these budget meetings um, and uh, our typical process is to talk, discuss each uh, class center or each school uh, in detail with general review. In this case, the final adoption of the school budget will be in a special meeting workshop on March 28th. We will be meeting with the town council both on April 12th and April 13th. Uh, that does include not only the school budget but the community services budget. Uh, so we're off and running. Uh, it would be nice if we knew how much money we were going to get from the state. We don't. Nor does anybody else. So uh, we will take the, we do have some estimates, of course, and that's what we will be building our budget against. Um, is there anything else anybody wants to say? It's really the gist of that. Um, and another item of, of just business, the next last item on my uh, report, the calendar committee, I will uh, be happy to invite two board members who would like to work on that. In the simple framework, every year 
it is a job of the school board to set next year's calendar. Of course, there are some constraints. Obviously, the state um, <laughs> statutes uh, require us to have 180 days, five of which are staff development days. Um, there's been lots of conversation over the past few years about extending that calendar. Uh, we've had some conversation about that. Um, some districts have been successful in adding some staff development days. It may be something you want to consider as uh, an issue that must be negotiated, but it is always, I think, be wonderful if we could add staff development days to our calendar. Uh, it's always a big need. Uh, but at any rate, at this point, all we have to do is start the process and have a couple of board members who particularly want to spend some time on this uh, let me know, and I will. Beth? Um, Anybody else? Me. Beth, are you? So this is my perennial <laughs> job here. The only person ever on the school board to vote against a calendar, I think, right, some years ago. Yeah. Remember that? But anyway. <laughs> No, but everybody is well. Um, it, it also includes, we should just say that a teacher, someone from oh, the yes. teacher, teacher's union, yes. representation administrators. You see, the, when you talk about calendar, you're setting student days, which is a school board policy area. But you're also setting a calendar that impacts teacher work uh, schedules. Therefore, that's and it, what, what is roughly called an advice and consent. Um, if you set a calendar that impacts teacher work schedule, you must negotiate the impact of those changes. You have free reign to set the student calendar. You go ahead and set the student calendar for 220 days if you want to, but you're going to have to <laughs> negotiate the impact of that, that change with the teachers association. So uh, any calendar discussion should always involve that. And as you just look back over our experiences, there are other kinds of considerations that crop up. Um, we, the last few years we've been dealing with uh, Labor Day. I haven't looked at this year's calendar to see where Labor Day falls. Um, we've all gotten kind of used to starting school now before Labor Day. Kind of, Maybe it's a nice policy to follow, but when Labor Day follows Labor on Day September 1st, and I don't know if that's the case this year or not. Fourth. It's on the 4th. It's, it's on the 4th. Well, that's kind of in the middle. We're probably... Anyway, that's those are those are considerations, and, and you may think those are small considerations, but they're yet to be be big ones. Um, another issue that's been brought up repeatedly in this area is the elimination of February vacation, but I would have to point out that has an impact on, on teacher schedules too, so we certainly need to be aware of that. Also has impact on parent schedule. And I have, I'm, I'm still very fond of year-round schooling. I, <laughs> I haven't had a whole lot of success in talking anybody into it, but uh, I think it's coming at some point, so let's talk about it. Anyway. I think we need to take baby steps. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have a budget that's going to allow us to do anything no. very imaginative that's in true. these areas, but we may be able to at least, um, you know, you never know, it might be something. We can do. There's also the issue of where we place teacher workshop days and what their purpose are, and that comes up. The hope of uh, extending those days might mean that we might want to place those somewhat differently. I don't know. Okay, that's my... Okay, any comments about Callan? No. Uh, the next item is school board subcommittees and reports, and the first is finance subcommittee. Charlie? Finance subcommittee met at 6.30 in the library. Um, essentially, the board as a whole was here. Not me. Okay, no. Carla. Uh, we signed the warrants. Uh, in the absence of our business manager, we tried to plod through his schedule. Um, we looked at the appropriations report, uh, talked about the budget process update, discussion of the budget schedule of meetings. Connie shared with us a little bit about the audit, which is about finished, and um, discussed and looked at the state subsidy allocation for next year. Okay. Moving on to uh, school building committee. Um, our last meeting was held on December 22nd. There was a lengthy discussion about um, how uh, the project is being documented in terms of safety checks and all that type of thing in light of what has happened in, in Portland. And um, I think we were satisfied that it is being, being very well documented. Um, 
We signed off on the delay on occupying the Lunt building. Um, there was a telephone committee established to look at, you know, various options for um, communication systems in the new buildings, and they will be presenting um, a variety of options at our next meeting. And we got a financial update on the project, and everything is on track and in order. Our next meeting is going to be on Thursday, January 26th at 7 o'clock um, at 1226 Shore Road. Anybody have any questions? No? Okay, moving on to the policy subcommittee. Beth? Uh, we met Wednesday, January 4th um, in Connie's office. We discussed some middle school issues and reviewed a number of policies. Um, our next meeting is Wednesday, February 1st at 9.30 in the superintendent's office. Um, we will be looking at some of the um, policies that relate to health that need updating in our book, as well as um, the field trip issues again and um, a number of other things. Okay, moving on to unfinished business, policies for second reading. Beth? We have um, a number of policies for a second reading. Should I state them as a motion before I read them? All? Um, does anybody have any particular questions on any of these? They are the um, green ones in your packet. Maybe I did have a comment actually. On the um, JGEAR administrative guideline model removal procedures for exceptional students. Yeah. Yeah. This is suggested language that was given to us, and on page three, um, there's a paragraph that said schools may want to consider adding the following. And there's a paragraph, are we considering adding the following? Or should we just have that paragraph there and cross out that line? It's a paragraph under number four on page three. Yeah, this one, um I don't know if Jackie looked at it or not. I remember at our last meeting it was to go to Jackie or Wayne. I can't remember, um, and uh, and make the decision on that one. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, we talked about that one. We talked about um, a drug and alcohol policy, and um, there was one other one that you um, asked me to look at to get model language for. Um, I did not look at this, and we've, um, this has been in place for as long as I've been in the system as far as um, having the IEP address certain um, of those individual changes. I mean, the IEP is usually fairly specific. It seems like we should have that paragraph in there, and we can just cross out that line that says schools may want to consider adding the following. I would advise you to have that language because uh, if you'll notice, it's um, it enables, but it doesn't command. Mm -hmm. In other words, yeah. it says you may consider. Excuse me. Yes, you, the team shall also consider whether. And uh, frankly, under some circumstances, if I can see us doing that type of thing, I think we probably have in some cases. Mm -hmm. So, having that language in there, I would say, unless Wayne or Jackie or Randy or. Mm -hmm. Like looking at, at, at number four, where they speak about um, students being tutored or... No, no, no. Um, well, that's what I was looking at. Um, it's under uh, Article page, 3. Right. Yes. Yeah, under <laughs> Article four. 3. Sorry. Paragraph 4 on page 3. Yeah. 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 On the Administrative Guideline JGEA-R, Model Removal Procedures. Yep. Article 3, number 4. Oh, oh. Okay, so we're just going to leave that paragraph in there, mm -hmm. just delete the based on uncertainty. Mm -hmm. No, Anybody? I'm confused. I yeah. thought we were advised to keep we schools may want to consider adding. 
No, we're just going to keep the language. Keep the just language. take out the the line, the, the direction. <laughs> yeah, the direction. Yeah, the underline. So ju just take out based on uncertainty in the law at this time. Schools may want to consider adding the following here. Just mm -hmm. take that out. And take leave out the, the Leave the paragraph. Right. Okay. okay. So does that make this a first reading now? No. No. It's no, just an no. administrative okay. guideline no. anyway. Okay. Okay, Beth, if you want to make a motion. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the following policies for a second reading. Um, IGBAC, referral to the pupil evaluation team, PET. JGEA, suspension expulsion policy for students with disabilities. JGEAR, model removal procedures for exceptional students with the change we just um, made. Um, JFCBR, non-return of school property and administrative guideline. EEAC, school bus safety. EEAC-R, administrative guideline, school bus safety. Um, would you mind amending your motion to say for adoption? For adoption, sorry. Okay. Is there any discussion? Okay, all in favor? 7 0. Okay, the next item is new business. First is the five year high school rehabilitation plan. Honey? Um, I included in your packet uh, the copy of that, uh, which actually you had just received at our December board meeting, but we didn't, it wasn't on the agenda. We didn't have a chance to really look at it. Um, and um, not only did I include that, but I also gave you a copy of what the town manager distributed to the town council. Uh, in the uh, last week at their council meeting, it had made reference at that time that um, they hadn't yet received this from the school. I made sure when I got back into the office uh, that they did receive this in time for them, for the council. The council has received this also. I also gave them our technology plan, which had significant cost uh, mm -hmm. projections and uh, was consistent with some of the issues that have been tagged as capital improvements here. Um, you'll notice in looking at the uh, five-year plan that, like all five-year plans, it's got specific pieces and it has specific numbers. They are, I think, best regarded as guesstimates, but what it does do is to, is to give you a sense of what are some of the major identifiable items that must be taken care of in order to rehabilitate this building. You know that we started this discussion, frankly, three or four years ago. The pressure was on the other two buildings, which were uh, approaching, um, you know, breakdown of major systems. This, is, this building, obviously being newer and more substantial building in the first place, uh, certainly has uh, far more um, integrity, but we were all concerned as we started looking at it about catching up. There was clearly a need to um, do more maintenance and had not had a good maintenance program probably for the last 10 years or so. It's hard to, for me to say exactly. So we've had some discussion about that in past budgets. We've also started some of the work that's listed here for 94 and 95, the windows in particular, the precast, the caulking, um, some of the, the paint items um, uh, have already been, been addressed and there's been a great deal of boiler work uh, done. Um, and I might remind you that we did in fact do a major upgrade of our lighting system in this building. We did that through the lease arrangement that we discussed at, uh, at some point last year. So some of those 94, 95 items have actually been started. Um, as you look at the kinds of things and the, and the dollar figures, um, this year's figures of the 94, 95 also include a uh, locker, re excuse me, not locker replacement, a uh, oil tank replacement mm -hmm. under mechanical. Uh, we didn't do that this year, but we do have um, about $9,000 in a fund that was um, so a state one-time only uh, fund that we applied for 
some of you may recall about three years ago, we got some reimbursement for the structural steel we had to put into the connector link at the middle school, and we got a small sum of money for the oil tank replacement. At that point, we thought it was going to be the middle school tank. It turns out to be this one. So we do have, I think, about, as I said, $9,000 in a revenue fund that we will be tagging as part of this. At least it's a drop in the bucket. I mean, it's a drop in the bucket, but it is that. I think as you look at these lists, um, some may seem more important than others, but one of the things that does pop up is the pool. And uh, Dan also made some reference to the pool without major costs. I think that is a huge issue. And I'm asking Scott and Dan to work on trying to pull out some of those costs. I have grave concerns about um, the pool. Pools are not only enormously expensive to run, one of the costing pieces I'm going to try to get for you is what, um, you know, take a look at our budget in this building for heat and electricity. Um, that there's a huge chunk of that that goes to the pool in a variety of ways. Uh, my major concern about the pool, though, is not the upkeep costs, which I think we need to be realistic and tag and uh, make sure that they're not really confused as school costs, certainly seen as separate because it is a community issue. Um, the pool is partially paid for through community services, too, and we, we will be, in our budget presentations this year, we'll try to be crystal clear about what pieces are coming out of the school budget, what pieces are coming out of the community services budget. I'm worried about the upgrade and the rehabilitation. You can't have a pool in that kind of climate. They look at the lockers, look at the, at the floors, look at the fittings, and uh, some of the pipes have been replaced already underneath, but I don't know at this point, I couldn't tell you the extent of that, and it's, it's just, you know, anybody knows anything about pools knows those things have to be replaced periodically. Um, and considering in, in shaping, pulling that out and getting the community good information on that is something that uh, we have to do. Can I, can I just ask uh, along those lines, there are some things to do with the pool in here. Yes. Uh, what is he thinking of doing? Is, is he thinking of doing a whole master plan for, for the pool area, including these? Or are these just such necessities that he's including them in here? Well, these, these would be necessities for uh, maintaining, okay. just maintaining it. Um, I, my understanding at this point is that this does not give you a, a um, a picture of what it would cost to replace and upgrade the pool facility itself. Okay. These are sort of the operating things. Now, I can clarify that again, but that's my current understanding of that. So in addition to this, he's working on a um, some kind of something along these lines that encompasses the whole pool area. Yeah. And, and what is our thought of how we're going to approach that? Are we going to talk to the town council about well, how yeah, we it has deal to be, with that. My, it, it's very clear to me that both from the community services point of view and the school department point of view, the pool is uh, a gigantic capital investment. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I don't feel I have enough uh, dollar signs and, and a clear picture of this right now to give you a bit, but I just know it has to be, um, you know, it absolutely must be pulled out, looked at, and we have to have some realistic figures and know what we're talking about. Uh, in the middle of that last paragraph, the sentence, uh, the ceiling, including grid and hangers, uh, will become, and then in parentheses, is a safety issue. Do you know what he means by that? Is there a well, major safety? Well, it's not an immediate. I mean, I don't see it as something that's going to fall down at this point from anything that he's told me, but I, I think what this is is simply let, alerting us to the fact that there are, you know, you keep with that moist heat, whatever the composition is and so on, I mean, it's just letting you know that that's something you have to... Mm -hmm have to look at it too. So it's it's clear this is like um, the the crunch time of, of understanding what the pool is and its costs and so on has come. We have to get back to you with more information on that. Is, I have a question for you. Um, <clears throat> Uh, next year, there's projected $10,000 for a computer power riser, um, and and I have the technology report here for all the hopes of, of computers in, in the classrooms. Is that going to be enough to um, 
carry the load of the new technology plan? I, again, wouldn't say that this is uh, something that's for the whole technology plan. This is something that is more directed towards the maintenance of the building itself. I mean, we have an energy computer system that runs mm -hmm. the, you know, it, it uh, operates the boilers. We can actually, all three buildings, or, I don't know if we're going to call it this building and two buildings. I don't know. We have to make up our minds. <laughs> Do we have three, a three building school system or a two building school system? Anyway, the computer controls are here. I, I, my, it's my understanding that is to do with the maintenance computer system, not the rest of it. Because he says on page four that the existing computer lab is running off a business machine lab circuit, which is undersized. This and expansion true. of technology is dependent on a power supply, which is constant. And um, where is that in this plan that they're going to have the power for this new technology? Well, handbook. It's possible that this is this is an integral piece of it. I'm not sure exactly where this piece fits into it. Uh, obviously, I can check with him. He's not here tonight to ask mm -hmm. specifically, but that's part of it. Um, you will notice that in next year's plan, there is. Um, here is it. Um, here somewhere. The expansion. Uh, I think you've I've pointed out to you before. We have this space here on the other side, and mm -hmm. we are going to be. Oh yes, it's down below. I know it was in the library expansion. Um, the that. 20,000 plus a 10,000 computer lab. We, we had a general rundown of cost last year. We looked at this from a variety of points of view. It's a, a fortunately, when the building was sized, all the major systems are in there. What will be needed is finishes and um, reconfiguring doors, how we want it to look, and so forth. So we will, I have every intention of, of I know the high school budget is coming in with, with this. Although that piece is here as part of the maintenance plan, um, books, equipment, and so on, be part of the uh, the high school plan. Uh, we hope we can do this. I mean, that's really important. It's it's not only um, a matter of having more kids in the high school, but it's it's clearly a matter of supporting the expanded mm -hmm. role the library plays, the technology plan, and so forth. So, is this basically going to be presented to us in some other form in the budget? Uh, yeah, I mean, you'll see certain pieces of it. On the other hand, some of this, uh, and we'll try to be clear, I mean, um, this is intended to give you a sense of what it's going to take in the overall cost. Um, I would guess that some of these pieces would change. I mean, I can't believe that we can forecast perfectly at this point. Mm -hmm. It is right. Dan's best uh, right. guesstimate from what he's been working on where the major problems lie. Tony, we obviously, I don't think, spent, or we're not going to spend $184,700, $94.95 for maintenance. What are we spending this year? Do you it's know? It's pretty close to the 134 that if you take the, uh, 50 out. you take out the energy, uh, the, four, the oil tank replacement, uh, 134 is yeah, just about close. what's in the budget. Yeah. Okay. And I see on the 95, 96, mm -hmm. he left blank roof at pool, precast caulking. Mm -hmm. Is he thinking that definitely needs to be done next year, but maybe it would come from a not out of our budget? Or and uh, do you know what he's thinking there? I'm not really sure at that point. The um, it may only be that he hasn't costed it out, and uh, although it's, it, it's obvious that there isn't a figure there, I, I'm not. I noticed that myself, and it's um, it's part of the my conversation with him. It's part of the general dilemma of the pool. Yeah. Okay. And that's really where it belongs. And he hasn't tried. He's. It's a little inconsistent. There's some some pieces of the pool in here. Yeah. My understanding is mainly what we have to do to maintain. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we, have to, we simply, as long as we're using it, we have certain costs that keep it going. But the, the long range or the major replacement costs, which we don't have real good figures on at this point. It said, oh, sorry. sorry. It said somewhere, too, about the oil tank. When we replace it, it's the time to start thinking about um, changing fuel. Uh, that's what we're burning number two. 
burning sludge. Six. 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 <laughs> it's six to go to two. Uh, that's a relatively simple procedure. It is, okay. Because it said somewhere, I thought, it should be time to research, should we change the tank, we should change our fuel, but if that's simple, I mean, so it's nothing we have to start It's not. A, it's yet. not a huge issue. What yeah. The problem with number six, and we're burning number six in all of our, our boilers, I believe, maybe one exception, um, that decision must have been made some years ago when I researched it because number six is so cheap in comparison to number yeah. two. Unfortunately, yeah, the, the maintenance costs go way up. Uh, some of the problems we, we've been having in um, the middle school allegedly caused by the difficulty you have in keeping things clean. Mm -hmm. So, I didn't mean that. And is it anticipated then we will do the oil tank? Oh, we have 95, to. 95, We have to. We have no choice. So that 50000 will get pushed into the... That's except correct, that except 9, that we do credit. have a small amount of money that we've been carrying as a revenue against that replacement, which, uh, and we don't have an absolute figure. The 50 is a little high, but it's... Um, yeah. Is there a time limit on how long we can carry the 9000 and push off? No, we, off? Can, we, we have it, and we can. Uh, it's been tagged every year in the audit as a revenue uh, being held in escrow for that project. And is there a time on when oil tank replacements need to be done? We have to do yeah, it next year. Yeah. We have to. Okay. We have no choice. That we, if you might recall, some of you in the building committee had that discussion about whether to bring gas into the town. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the issues that was used as a factor to try to get a handle on that was the fact we're going to have to replace the oil tank. We would still have to pay to get it out of the ground. In this case, of course, we have to put another one back in. Um, it's not an overwhelming cost, and we made that decision about the gas. So. But however, this is the time when we have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And this is a very small item, but on the signage, no parking and all that kind of thing. Doesn't the town do that anyway, or do they not do that on? They don't do that on the school property. Um, they I may. They did. Uh, through the ADA projects, we have certainly had some shared projects, but um, I mean, I don't want to make any false statements here. But it's my. My understanding, we have pretty much paid for things that are on school property. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. and I'll tell you, one thing okay. that needs to be done is exterior pole lights around here. Yeah. Oh, they're terrible. It is yeah. extremely it's dangerous terrible. to it attend is. anything. You'll find tonight when you leave. Yeah. It is terrible. Anything. It's a real yeah. problem. And, and it's when a safety I, issue. It's, uh, yeah. you, you can see what the costs are, and you can see that the, uh, these aren't all of them. Um, I think in the, in the narrative here, it explains to you that they're shot. And there's no way of just fixing them. They have to, you have to replace major pieces. Um, and uh, so, yes, of course, we need that. You're right. That's a terrible problem. What we may have to do is prioritize mm -hmm. as a board, because mm -hmm. I don't see us being able to spend two hundred and actually three hundred thousand dollars if you push the oil tank replacement into that next year's. Well. It's, it's a sobering list of things that need to be done. And uh, in some cases, they may not cost as much. I mean, these mm -hmm. uh, these costs are not costs that have gone out to bid or, you know, anything like that. But they are his best sense of what it would be. And when you add the pool problem on top of it, mm -hmm. it's another issue that I think we um, we simply must give people good information about and people make their minds up what they can afford. I think we need to um, have some serious conversations with the town council about, you know, I think it's very important to stick to some kind of uh, very good maintenance plan. Um, you hear it every time the town council has a meeting, people bring up the high school and maintenance. And um, we're just, we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to take it seriously. By the same token, they have to understand the strain that puts on the educational program. That's right. So, mm -hmm. and they are town buildings. Well, it is not the, the dimension <clears throat> of this problem, uh, I should certainly quickly say, is not the same as the mm -hmm. dimension of the problems in the other two buildings. Right. Um, even, even taking care of these things over <laughs> five years, a million dollars, is sounds like a whole lot, but basically it's by no means the dimension of the other, of, of the other problem. 
but it is one that we've been talking about for the last two or three years trying to get some kind of handle on it yeah. and you may recall that this year we absolutely managed to keep some money in not enough but some money in and um, that's the kind of conviction we, we really have to put as a high yeah. priority All right, so we'll be saying this again in budget form. Oh, yeah. Okay, moving on to policy's first reading. Beth. Um, only two. Uh, we have two policies for a first reading tonight. The first one is um, KGBA smoking on school property. The only change is what you see underlined. It said um, in accordance with federal law, whereas it, before it just began with um, all persons. The other one is uh, file KK. Um, visitors to school. Our present policy was the top paragraph that we um, crossed out and took uh, quite a bit of the suggested new language pieces and made our own changes. Um, and we wanted to be clear that that policy was about visitors to the school, not volunteers in the school, so we wanted to cross-reference it with the volunteer policy. Um, if there are any questions on those, please. Go ahead. We should probably also say that the reason that the reference to the board members was taken out is that we thought that was more appropriately dealt with. There's another, we had another, uh, there's another right. policy, a suggested new language policy, which we're just getting to, um, and I think it's called, is it ethical? No, um, the board role of the board, a yeah. role of a board member in the school or something like yeah. that, or responsibilities of a board member, I think. Yeah. Um, and we're about to get to all the suggested new policies. Comments, questions, suggestions? No? I think I was just going to double check, but I think where you have cross reference volunteer policy, oh. ICCA, I think it's actually IICA. That's what we had crossed out. Connie was going to check it. We didn't have okay. to look right there for Because when I was going over this, I think I found it under IICA, IICC. First we had IICA and then we went to ICC. IICC. IICC. Your reasoning for for crossing out C. Um, or not including C. About visits to individual classes. Yeah, we already said they had to call the school in advance and schedule visits to the school um, or with members of the school staff. Um, just felt it was redundant. So I guess we thought it was just... Redundant. Yeah. Okay. Plus, I'm not sure that really the principal needs to be involved, be involved. in every interface between a parent and a... Oh, that's true. <laughs> it seemed, seemed a little burdensome on principal and um, kind of against the, uh, the idea that teachers and parents ought to talk together. Any other comments? Questions? <coughs> All right, well, we'll come back next month for the other second reading. The other thing we have is um, the ones to delete. Um, oh, yeah. There are two policies. One was KKR, which was an um, administrative guideline that went with our old KK, which had some of the same stuff in it that we found in the suggest suggested new language, so we decided there was no reason to have the administrative guideline number 25. It was all in our regular policy now, which is the reason to delete that one. And the policy KLB was covered under policy IIA, which was the selection of instructional and library materials. So they were both already covered. Can we delete well, those? Well, we need though? to. Yeah, I, I'll I make think a we motion need to you're... move to delete those. If... I'd like to make a motion that we delete policy KLB and administrative guideline KKR. Is there a second? Second. Priscilla. Any discussion? All in favor? 7 0. OK. 
Okay, the last item is nominations for athletic fee coaching positions for 1994-95. Okay, we have 7th and 8th grade boys swimming, Ben Manning, and actually 7th and 8th grade girls swimming, also Ben Manning. Middle school indoor track, Martin Keene, and middle school indoor track, who's one of the Entertain a motion. I'd like yeah. to make a motion that we um, accept the superintendent's recommendations for the athletic fee uh, positions. Um, Charlie? The, just a clarification. So the, the memo from Nancy Hutton that we discussed during our policy, I mean our finance sub, subcommittee meeting related to these two positions also, in addition to these two positions. These are the two coaching. Okay. The other is a monitor. Okay. Additional requests for monitor. So there would be three staff people dealing with these. Do you know how many students? We, um, the sign-ups haven't occurred yet, but we anticipate around 60. This also includes sixth grade, correct? Yes, it does. So it's three grades. Mm -hmm. Is there a cutoff below which you do not need that monitor? I mean, we we're talking about large numbers. What if for some reason? It's really more at the request of the high school because they have the three floors, and so to have one right. of our staff people on each floor. Um, so we would have to look, for instance, if we only had 25 students come out for that, I think that's certainly something we could look at. Um, but I don't know. It would depend on what the, the schedule is because the monitor does come at the request of the high school, and that's because it was the three floors. They run in the hallway. They run in the hallway. Oh. That's what it's like. <laughs> That's, the That's an interesting indoor track. <laughs> they do it in most schools. Mm -hmm. Unless you is have an indoor right? track, you run mm -hmm. through the halls. This is, this interesting. is an issue that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what does the insurance company think? Suffered through many years. Um, well, they don't like it, but they don't stop it as long as you have some monitoring. Um, the issue of, you know, the, there's some obvious risk you run. If you, walk out and don't realize there's somebody running down the hall. <laughs> um, I will say that's one of the things that Scarborough Middle School is getting for its $10 million is an indoor track, right? I'm sure I don't know. I've heard the rumor that they're getting it. I don't know for a fact, but... Maybe they'll let us use it. <clears throat> that's not good. <laughs> you know, sharing resources. Hmm. Over what will they use our, right. our, 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 our pool? Our pool. Our pool. <laughs> Maybe they'll, mm -hmm. Maybe they'll help us with the $10 million, right? <laughs> Well, those are the kinds of things we're going to have to think about because they're just... Anyway. Mm, they, do have, they do have student body that participate in our swim programs. So. Yeah, that's true. Well, I think we're, yeah. as a community, we're going to be looking hard at the pool and, and the yeah. realities of what it means to, to run it, so... Right. Okay. Just need more figures in it. All right. All in favor? Seven zero. All right, we've reached the end of our regular agenda, so I would entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiations. So moved. Okay, so seconded. Second. Okay. All in favor? Seven zero.